the rhythm section does is if you look at, you look at the rhythm section like you look at a car, all right, the bass is the wheels, the drums is like the motor, and the piano is like the body. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to play C minor. And we're going to use those two chords, and I'll try to give you all just an understanding basically of how the jazz band works. The bass does what's called walking. So the, the, the bass will now walk. C minor, and you see that it's like somebody strolling. <laughs> Go ahead and walk. But yeah, that sounds like the creeper or something, right? <laughs> and everything sits on top of that. It's at the bottom of the harmony. That means if you take a panel, all the other horns are going to be above the bases down here. It's a swing, it's a swing groove, which means the accent is on two and four. It's like sometimes I play concerts, you know, I see people out in the audience, Americans too, and they'll be playing, and I'll be playing and they'll be going. You know what I mean? So I look out in the audience and I see this going on, I say, damn. I start wondering if I'm in Europe or something. I know with the drums, the drum set, this is a very basic drum set, all right? What he has. <laughs> it's very simple. But that's right, because he's going to play something on it. He won't be like these people who have 80,000 drums and they go. Yeah. So now what this is, this is called a sock cymbal. And this is what's, what gives it. What is this like in the engine? I don't know. It's like something you hear. <laughs> you play the saxophone on two and four. Just the saxophone. Now you see that? That's giving the. Come on, swing for it. Yeah. I see that's giving the bass a little more motion, right? Now this is a ride symbol. All right, and what he's gonna do on this is what we call riding, just like in an automobile. He's just sitting on just. I want you to just play like. Well, my father was one of my teachers, of course, and I had a teacher named John Fernandez. He taught me like about love of the trumpet and love of knowledge. And I had a teacher named John Longo, who was my first actual trumpet teacher when I was 12 years old, and he taught me how to listen to the different kinds of musics and just have a respect for practicing because he really believed in practicing, and he got me really thinking about practicing. And Kent Jordan used to make me practice also, a student that I went to school with him. And uh, then George Jansen was my teacher I really loved. And he taught me a lot about just playing the trumpet and the mechanics of it. Get real soft. Play soft. And I see this like if, if you have the car that's going like 10 miles an hour. It's like a real pretty car and you just... <laughs> you just profile it. You know, you're driving through the neighborhood. And you're looking around, you're like, yes. <laughs> Checking out what's happening. You just got you a brand new, nice automobile. It's clean. You got a bad suit on. You got your girlfriend with you. She's fine. Say yes. And you look at some of your friends. You say, what's happening? You're not going fast. You're going very slow because you want everybody to check it out. And that's what a good groove is like. You just want to lay in it and just profile. You don't want it to be loud. You don't want to play a bunch of wild stuff on it. You just want to look cute and play. Now what they can do, just the bass and the drums, this is the heart of the rhythm section in any style of music. It could be pop music, funk, reggae, but now this is jazz music, so what they do is called swing. Now what they can do is they can alter rhythms that they play. They change the beat. Like, let me show you, let me show you what I'm talking about. I want you to just play like pretty flowing chords, you know. Now this is one way she could play. We feel that it's our job to deal with our tradition and teach the younger musicians what it is they need to know. And we deal purely with the tradition and the legacy and the music and that's our job. We study it and we know what it represents. Here's how the band is set up. The bass is in the middle and the piano is over here and the drums over here. Now what happens rhythmically in the rhythm section is the piano has a dialogue with the drums. 
That type of dialogue can go on throughout an entire song, and the rhythms can change and vary and be done in inverses and done around, and it can be a dialogue with a sax cymbal in the piano or the bass drum. It's an infinite number of things that can be done creatively with the dialogue that goes on between the piano and the drums. And then when you throw the bass in there and the bass starts throwing some rhythms and some vamps up underneath there, you can get just a small idea of the amount of creativity and the many different creative things that can take place with the jazz rhythm section.